It's been a pleasure to come back to Greensboro, uh, as I live in England, to be able to talk with you about this kind of stuff. Um, as you see over here, I'm defining them as spiritual or magical single path tools. And perhaps the labyrinth uh, story that you're familiar with is Theseus and the Minotaur, or the Minotaur, in Crete. And um, he went in and, and killed this monster who was kept in this maze-like thing. And actually, it was a maze. It wasn't a labyrinth that he was kept in. And the Greeks got it wrong. But it's okay, the Greeks get it wrong a lot. And uh, in any event, um, you may recall that his father was the king of, of Athens, Aegeus. And because of something stupid the Greeks had done, uh, the island of Crete, the Minoan island, which had the world's, uh, or at least in the Eastern Mediterranean's first navy, was able to just keep Greece at bay. This was about 1,300 years before the time of Christ. And they demanded that sacrificial victims to be sent to Crete every uh, nine years. And uh, the beautiful bunch of men and the cream of their crop women were sent to Crete. And um, what had happened was that uh, Minos, the king of the Minoan civilization, had been very fortunate in his life, and he wanted to thank Poseidon, or Neptune, as you might know him through the Roman mythology, king of the sea, for what he had uh, done for him in his navy and for his country. And so he said, send me something that is worthy that I may give it back to you. I have nothing worthy to offer to you. And so with that, this enormously beautiful white bull comes charging out of the sea. And... Um, uh, Minos takes one look at it and says, I like that one. <laughs> I think I'll give him my, the head of the bull, the big bull, and my royal herd. Well, it's never a smart idea to cause, um, make an oath to a god and not keep your oath, regardless of what god we're talking about. <laughs> and um, so uh, Poseidon um, decided he wanted to uh, get even. Now, uh, at this time, Minos uh, had a wife named Pacify, uh, and he caused uh, Pacify to become interested in this bull. I'm glad there are not young children here, <laughs> but in any event, um, all the young children aren't here, are they? <laughs> <laughs> in any event, uh, um, she uh, was a moon goddess, and indeed she spent most of her time out at the royal field mooning over this white object of Torian uh, amazement to her. And so there was a Greek inventor named Daedalus at the time who was building uh, the uh, aqueduct to bring the water from the uh, mountains down to Knossos, the capital of the Minoan Empire. And so she went to him and she said, you got to help me out, Daedalus. I'm just, this bull is really good. And so he built a wicker cow for her and covered it with um, skins, cow skins. And she got inside, and they rolled it out into the field. <laughs> and um, she was what they call pacified. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, was that a good enough code for everyone? Yeah. 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 I didn't want to be young years uh, uh, talking about. In any event, the result of this union was the Minotaur, who was uh, head of a bull and a, a body of a man, and he just went crazy. He was just causing havoc all over the island. And so uh, Minos called Atlas and he says, you've got to help me. I need to uh, contain this son of mine who's, a son of mine, who's going crazy. And uh, so he built the labyrinth for him. And it really is a maze that once you go in, you get lost. And you can't find your way out. So it's time for another group of Greeks to come over as sacrifices. And uh, Aegeus' son, Theseus, says, send me, Father. I'll go over and take care of these Minoans for you. And they said, no, you're the next king. You can't, I won't let that happen. Oh, send me. So there's a funeral barge with a big black sail. And he sails across the, uh, uh, the sea to uh, 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 Crete with, the, with the words, his last words to his father saying, there's a white sail under the floorboards. If you return safely, be sure to put up your white sail so I know that you're coming. And he goes there, and what Minos has in mind are kind of like Olympian games, where he would pit uh, 
Crete's best against Greeks, Greece's best. Uh, sort of shades of the Roman lions, Christians kind of combats a little bit later on. And Theseus was saved till the end when he was pitted against this enormous Cretan giant. And um, imagine a big amphitheater with, with these two down there. And after some tussling in true heroic fashion, Theseus kills uh, this, or, or defeats this Minoan giant. And he's looking around the audience, and they're throwing flowers at him because he's won. And he picks up the flowers, and he sees this really beautiful, whose name is Ariadne. He was also Minos' daughter, and he gives her the flowers, right? And it's love at first sight. That's my sister. It's love at first sight. I should have given it to you, Karen. <laughs> and, uh, um, <laughs> and so she knows what's going to happen to uh, Theseus, because what happens to all of these guys is they get stuffed into the labyrinth, and they get lost in there until the Minotaur finds them, and then he has them for lunch. Called the Mon Mino Burgers. <laughs> and um, so Theseus said, What are we going to do here? Ariadne once again goes to this wonderful Greek, Daedalus, who says, I've got the clue, which is spelled C L E W, which is actually an Anglo Saxon word, which means a ball of yarn. And he gives her the clue, which is a ball of yarn. And you tie it to the uh, lintel post at the mouth of the labyrinth and you put it on the ground, and it rolled to the lair of the Minotaur. This foul feathers and bones and guts and straw and yuck down there. And Theseus follows the ball down this way and that way and the other way. And he finally comes to this Minotaur's foul lair, and he strangles the sucker with his bare hands. <laughs> And he picks up the ball of yarn, walks his way out again, right? And finds his way out of the maze. Um, and uh, so he then quickly says, come on, Ariadne, we, we got to get the other Greeks. And they free them and get back in their boat. And he stones holes in all of the other, uh, of the Minoan Navy, so that they sank the Navy, and takes off. And they go to an island called Delos, where they dance something called the Crane Dance, which is indeed dance to this day on uh, Delos, uh, and it's basically a chain of people who follow the path of the labyrinth. They dance back and forth, back and forth, in exactly this pattern, and or this pattern, or this pattern. And then they went to the next island, Naxos, and it's not clear what happened. There are different stories about what happened there, but um, Dionysus fell in love with Ariadne. And I think he caused Theseus to forget her. In any event, he ditched her and took off back for home. And in this excitement, do kids ever do what your parents <coughs> ask? No, we forgot to change the sail. <laughs> and Aegeus is standing on top of the cliffs of Athens, watching anxiously for his son's return, sees the dark sail and in great despair, throws himself into the Aegean Sea, which was named after him. <coughs> and so this cad, Theseus, comes home and finds himself king of Athens and goes on to other great exploits. And he is actually the most written about human being in Greek mythology. So he was a great hero of uh, Greek myth. And this is the story of uh, Theseus and the Minotaur. There are many more things about what happened afterwards, but we'll, we'll leave it there. Now actually, the earliest datable coins that we have come from about 300 years before the time of Christ. But this is, um, this happened about 1300 years before the time of Christ, before Greece gained its ascendancy. Now actually, the labyrinth goes back much, much further than 1300 years before the time of Christ. And this is pointed out to us by a lady named uh, Maria Gimbutas, who found bird figurines that had this meander pattern. See it here? That go back to 15,000 years before the time of Christ. There's some chairs here if you want to come in and sit down. Come on in. Uh, and she found these meander patterns 
um, on the uh, on on these bird figurines. Here's another example. These were goddess figurines. Now this is the meander pattern, if you will, and it's it's there should be a line here. I'm not sure why there isn't, but it goes like this. Now meander means to wander aimlessly, but in fact you're not wandering aimlessly here. Uh, although the Greeks once again didn't quite understand the idea of this. It comes from the Meander River in Turkey and uh, southwestern Turkey. And hi. And uh, the thing that's interesting is if you think of this as a fan and you start folding it out, you see it turns into a labyrinth. And so they undoubtedly knew about this labyrinth long, long, long before uh, the Minoan civilization. Now, there are a number of different kinds of labyrinths. This is, the simplest one is called the classical three-circuit labyrinth. This one was built after a, uh, uh, a big seminar, uh, symposium in Glastonbury in England where I live, by the landlady who uh, was putting up some people in her B&B. And again, it's just you go around and around and around and you're in, it's real quick. Here, uh, labyrinths are built with seed patterns, and in which case this seed pattern is a plus and four dots. And what you can do is just start in the center and just going around and going around and going around and you make the labyrinth. Okay? It's quite simple. This is a classical three-circuit labyrinth because it has ultimately has three circuits. Um, one, two, three, and this is the goal and this is the mouth. Those are <coughs> And you can go from the top to either way you want to go, right or left, it doesn't make any difference. These are called walls, and these are the circuits or the paths. The next one is the classical seven circuit, which is the one on the board over there. And this is by far the most popular labyrinth in the world, I would say. Uh, most found, especially in the, in the prehistoric world, although this is actually a rather new one, built by a friend of mine overlooking the city of Bath in England. And this one has a C pattern, which is a plus sign with four L's, one in each quadrant, and then dots. Okay? And if you have pencil and paper, I, I'd really urge that you uh, go home and try drawing this when you get home. But again, remember you're going to start in the center, and you can go either way. We'll go this way to the first L, and then the next one, and the next line you can draw to, and so on around. And you'll just construct this. Where is David? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. See, boom, 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 boom. I have crayons too. If these are, if, the if anyone would like to draw, mm -hmm. please do. Make this seed pattern, and then you can make this labyrinth. This is a classical seven-circuit labyrinth, mm -hmm. and this particular mm -hmm. labyrinth is the most popular labyrinth in the world. Although in the United States, there's another one that is perhaps even more popular than this, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Here you go. Okay. I have crayons here, too. It's a on. <coughs> That's really neat. Draw, draw this pattern here. Um, let's take some time to do that. <coughs> So in the upper right hand, upper left hand corner, draw a plus sign, four L's, and four dots. Okay? Okay. Are the pencils not working, you guys? And then you need to draw another one sort of in, oh, you always need more room above than below, so leave some room up above. Draw another one of these, just so you have the pattern over here. And you always start at the top of the cross. So in this case, we're in, in this example behind me, you go up and to the right, and you go to the first L or dot that you can find. Okay, is everybody mm -hmm. happy along here? Mm -hmm. And then you go to... You notice that it's bilaterally symmetrical. It's the same on both sides. So you go to the same thing on the other side, which is the top of this mirror L in the upper left-hand quadrant. And this time you go to the dot in the upper right-hand quadrant. 
and then from the dot in the upper left hand quadrant you go around to the bottom of the L in the upper right hand quadrant. And then from the bottom of the L in the upper left hand quadrant around to the cross and you don't even actually have to lift your pencil up. You can just drag it right across and around again. In this case to the top of the L in the upper lower right hand quadrant. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Pretty neat, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then the top of the L in the lower left hand quadrant mm -hmm. around to the dot in the lower right hand quadrant. And then finally from the dot in the lower left hand quadrant to the bottom of the L in the lower right hand quadrant. And last but not least, the bottom of the L in the lower left hand quadrant to the bottom of the cross. So this is a classical one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the goal is eight circuit labyrinth, and it's a left-handed one. You go to the left in your first turn, so this is a left-handed one. If on the other hand you started making your labyrinth this way, boom, boom, and boom, you would have ended up with a right-handed one. And all I can tell you is, if you can take this home with you tonight, and you can make yourself do it about ten times, what you're going to find is something magic happens. And what the magic is, is that your left brain, which knows how to do this, turns off. And your hand begins to what I call gno what to do. <laughs> it just, it's, it's a click. A click happens. And you turn into a different consciousness. And you'll actually find what you're doing is drawing a spiral and just lifting your pencil up once more. Which is in effect what a library is. For these classical. Now, you can build bigger labyrinths. This is an 11 circuit by just putting more L's in the quadrants. This one is in uh, Gotland, which is an island off the coast of Sweden, and it's built with just one more L in each of the quadrants. You get the idea? And you do it exactly the same way, uh, only you end up with 11 circuits. Now, is this, can you tell me if this is a left-handed or a right-handed labyrinth? Right. Right-handed. The first turn is up and to the left. Do you see it? Oh, Oh, let's look at it again. <laughs> the first arc that you draw goes to the right, but the first turn is That's right, it's a mirror. That's interesting. It, it, they mirror each other. This is all about mirrors. But you see that first turn is up and to the left. Sorry, it should stay there longer. I can't make it do that. Oh, then you work it. <laughs> okay. Now there's even a 15 circuit one. Uh, this is the biggest classical labyrinth in the world that I know of. It's, uh, it's called uh, Tibla. And it's in central Sweden. It's Viking. And it's made with three L's in each quadrant and a dot. Oh, a thousand eighty, a thousand years after, somewhere. Like that. Does it make a difference um, which way you turn? Does it uh, signify anything? Well, apparently, to some people, it does. I'm not aware of what the difference is. I know that uh, a friend of mine, who's a real world labyrinth expert, says that in the ancient world, most classical seven circuits, uh, two thirds were right-handed, one third was left-handed, and in today's world, it's the other way around. For some reason, we seem to like it the other way. Hmm. See, that one's a right hand. <coughs> okay. So a labyrinth is a single path magical spiritual, magical spiritual right brain tool. It is indeed a tool to enhance the activity in your right intuitive, creative, um, less concrete side of your personality. Now, a maze is a left brain puzzle. The idea is, hey, I came to this Y last time, and I went this way, and I'm back here, so that didn't work, so i got to go this way. You're offered a number of choices in a maze. Also, another feature of a maze is they're usually high-walled, whereas labyrinths are low-walled, so that you get lost in there. That's the whole purpose of it, is to get lost 
And it's a puzzle. It's an analytical puzzle. How do I get through to where I'm going? Whereas with a the labyrinth, there's no question. The only question is, am I going in? And once you go in, your path is predetermined. This is at Longleat, uh, and it's the longest maze in the world. Uh, now, a hedge maze. This one actually is the world's longest corn maze, uh, although there's going to be one here in Greensboro this summer. Keep tuned. There is? Yes, there is going to be one on uh, in Allendale at David Allen's farm. <laughs> so please do give it a walk. This is, um, it's not ready yet, but the corn's got to grow up a bit higher. But this is Tolly's Farm Maze in southeastern uh, England, and it's a, it's a corn maze. Where's the goal? You guess, you tell me. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I would guess it's this, but I don't know for sure. Mazes aren't very interesting to me. This is a joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do answer, but we don't give refunds. <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry. <laughs> Inject a little humor. They say it all talks. So should be good. <laughs> and, uh, these are British labyrinths. It's interesting how a number of these are called turf mazes, which means they're cut in the, in the grass, if you will, but they are labyrinths. And uh, some of them are uh, much more complicated. Some of them are quite simple. Some of these, like these classical mm -hmm. seven circuit here, they get a little more complicated up here. <clears throat> these begin to look more like medi medieval mazes, which we'll get into in a minute. And this is more of a Roman type. When they're rectangular like this, the chances are they're more Roman. This one's in Saffron Walden, yeah, I believe. And it's built of one brick on its side, and you walk on that one brick all the way around. Hey, Sega. There it is, right there. What? Uh -huh. I just noticed that the one in the upper left looks like a maze, but is that... It is a maze. I oh, know it's not. Yes, it is a maze. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. They blew it. The book blew it. It's not mine. Okay. <laughs> uh, but this one is the one in Saffron Walden that I was telling you about, and it's one brick. The path is one brick. The side of one brick, and you walk on it. And it takes a good long time to be walking this guy. Now this one's Bremer, and it's based on the second a major uh, labyrinth in the world, the Chartres-type labyrinth, which is, there's only one of them in Chartres Cathedral, uh, although actually this is a turf example of it uh, in south-central England. But if you notice, I want you to notice how people are walking in this, okay? Mm -hmm. And the red line does the walking. And I'm going to wait until we get all the way to the center and start over again. From here, okay. Now you see, you start in the quadrant. You start in filling in the lower left-hand quadrant, but the other quadrants are filled in a little too. But you'll see that the lower left-hand quadrant gets filled first, then the then the upper left hand, then the upper right-hand one, and finally the lower right-hand one. You get the idea? And then you turn around and walk it out. That's the idea with the labyrinth. When you get to the center or the goal, you turn around and walk it out. Uh, this one is a classical seven circuit in Dalby, in north central, uh, and it's called a turf maze, but it is a labyrinth. That's me, the long hair. Now, one of the more famous uh, uh, tourist attractions, if you will, in Britain is the town that I come from, Karen and I come from, uh, in Glastonbury in southwestern England. And the tour is one of the dominating features of Glastonbury. <coughs> And as you can see, it, it's, it's highly terraced. You see it? Now, terracing, the reason you terrace, from an agricultural point of view, is to grow stuff on the side of a hill. And when you terrace, you only terrace the south sides, and maybe east and west sides of the hill. But why terrace the north side? Because it's going to be in shade, as you can see in this picture. And yet, this is terraced on both sides. There's no particular evidence that this was a fortification. And in the 60s, it was found by some to be a classical seven-circuit labyrinth, a three-dimensional one. And um, it's essentially like a Rorschach inkblot test. Uh, if you're familiar with those ink blots that you go squish and what do you see in there, and then it tells more about the shrink's interpretation than what you see, but that's a different point of view. <laughs> but in any event, uh, 
if you see it, it's there, and if you don't, it ain't. It's as simple as that. And if you've walked it and have felt its power, you know that it is there. Um, it's it's about a six hour commitment to walk this guy. Um, these are in Rocky Valley down in Tint, near Tintagel in Cornwall where uh, King Arthur was conceived. And these are about that big. And so it's like the yellow pages, you let your fingers do the walking. And indeed you can walk the labyrinth, one that you draw on a piece of paper with your fingers, and it can have a, a powerful effect. Uh, there's another one over here. Some, the sign says these are about 1500 BCE. Um, when I asked the guy who put up the sign, he said, well, that's from the ones from uh, the Minoan civilization work. <laughs> Not good enough. They're probably, I think, 18th, 19th century. But in any event, there they are, and tourists love them, and Rocky Valley's a great place. If you go to southwestern England, to Cornwall, be sure to go to Tintagel. It's a magical, magical place where King Arthur was born. And uh, this are just up the road, towards Boss Castle. Now this one is out on the Scilly Islands, which is as far southwest as England goes. And uh, as you can see, it's not a labyrinth. But it is a labyrinth, isn't it? But it's not a labyrinth. And this is actually the, uh, this is actually a maze that you're looking at. But it used to be a labyrinth, and you can see that it used to be a labyrinth. And this happens, and we'll see better examples of this in Sweden, where basically what happens, people walk these stones, and they kick them, and they don't know how to put them back correctly. And so they put them back incorrectly, and they turn into mazes. So in that sense, a maze is a degenerate labyrinth. <laughs> this one uh, was built uh, at a wonderful Norman castle. I was talking to someone about this earlier today. It's called Benton Castle. And the lady who uh, built this one is um, a wonderfully, delightfully wacko British eccentric who worked on the Enigma uh, problems during World War II, the German codes. And her husband bought her this Norman castle, which is about big enough for four people to move around carefully in. And it was above this river to see if ships were coming up, and they'd send brigades up to tell that the enemy was coming. She, it took her two years to build this. This is a shark type labyrinth, and it took two men two years to build this labyrinth. And it's a very, very special one. This is a new one. What's it made of? It's made of curb stones and gravel. This one is up in Scotland, and it's on the um, uh, at the back of a friend of mine's house, uh, Patrick McManaway, who works here in Vermont. His mom lives in this house, and she walks it every day. And she has Parkinson's and claims that it really helps her. Uh, this is one that was built by the gentleman standing above me as I'm leaning over. And we saw a picture of it earlier as a classical seven circuit. This is on Salis uh, Salisbury Hill in Bath. It's a new one. That's an Iron Age hill fort behind. 